the question I'm going to try to discuss is uh, when does the market work? So uh, the market and some welfare theorems that we can derive from that. Markets plus welfare. Now, it can be proved that under certain conditions, these are, I'm going to mention four conditions here, one, two, three, four, then a free market, meaning people who are free to exchange the things they want for the prices they want, will produce two outcomes. So what are these four conditions? Well, the first condition is perfect competition. That's good because it drives prices down. Second condition is perfect information which is good because then no people who know more than other people can exploit that knowledge. So a doctor cannot exploit the fact that he knows more than you about how to treat diseases. Or the car mechanic cannot uh, exploit that information and charge more money than uh, you were willing to pay. The third condition is um, no externalities, meaning that the price has to reflect all relevant consequences. So for example, pollution. If the pollution is not reflected in the price, then we'll have too much of something, and too much pollution. That we, we can't have that. No externalities. And finally, no public goods. By a public good, I mean a good um, which, um, if I consume it, then everyone else can also consume it. So, for example, TV signals used to be like that. And if I consume a TV signal, then everyone else could use that TV signal as well. And it would be inefficient, that in fact, not to give that TV signal to everyone else if it is actually produced. But that created a problem because no one wanted wanted to produce that. So that's why the market will have a problem by providing pr public goods like that. But if those four conditions are satisfied, okay, then we can prove two things. And that's what we call the first and second theorem of welfare economics. First, we can prove that the outcome will be Pareto efficient. There will exist an outcome that is Pareto efficient. What do we mean by that? We mean that the outcome we will get is such that no one can be made better off without someone else being made worse off. That's all we're saying. We're not saying it's a, you know, a good outcome or, or a perfect outcome. We're just saying that we're, we're ending up in a situation where no one can be made, made better off without someone being made worse off. All the profitable trades are made. So you could have a lot of inequalities there. That's fine. But it's 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 it's, just, it's still Pareto efficient. Now a lot of people complain about about that because they think it's too weak. And then the second theorem comes into play, because the second theorem tells you that depending on the initial condition, all possible distributions are possible. So all possible income distributions or resource distributions will be possible using the free market, depending on the initial condition all possibilities. Always possible. Now I'm going to try to show this a little bit more formally using something called an Edgeworth box. In this box we have to assume some things. We have to assume, make it simplified. We have to assume, for example, there are two people in this economy, A and B. And we also assume there are only two goods, okay? Let's assume that there are uh, only and oranges and apples. Now, A is up here, so the more oranges A will get, the further out here it will be. And the more apples the per person A will get, the higher up we're here. So, for example, A could, we could be here, okay, which means that A has this many apples here, and this many oranges, okay? That's fine. Now, in economics, we draw this indifference curves, telling us the mix between oranges and apples, the mix between different goods that person A is equally happy about. So we could have some curves like that. Of course, the person becomes more happy if the person gets more of both. So that's why you can get to a higher indifference curves here. Higher and higher indifference curves means you're more and more happy. Now B, we measure B here. So we have a fixed amount of apples and oranges in, in this economy. This is the dis given distribution, okay? So the more apples person A gets, the less apples person B gets. 
So this is the final amount of apples, and you have to distribute it between X, uh, A and B. Okay. Now B will also have some difference curves, and you can draw them. So they will look like this. Again, the person will become more happy the more they will get from both. Okay. And I have a mix between apples and oranges that B and are equally happy about. Okay. Now, first of all, you have to notice that it is possible in this economy that both will become more happy by changing the distribution. It's not like you have a zero sum gum zero zero sum game where, where no improvements are possible. For example, let's say you are here. It is possible possible for both A and B to get to a higher indifference curve. So you can see that right here, then the indifference curve for, for A would be like that. And the indifference curve for B would be something like this. So you see, it's possible here to get to a higher indifference curve for both of them. Okay. And as long as that is possible, then they will do that. But if you're at this point, it's not possible. Okay? So here it's the, ah, uh, this is not drawn very well, but it's a tangent here, it's a tangent here, and a tangent, okay? So trade is, is uh, trade will improve your utility, your happiness. And that's simple to understand, actually, because if you hate apples, and you get all the apples to begin with, then you can trade some of the apples and get some oranges, and you become more happy. And if the other person actually enjoys those apples more then then you both become more happy but if you are at this point here it's not possible to trade and become more happy this is something we call a contract curve so all points here and here it's possible to trade and both people will uh, increase their utility get to a higher indifference curve but points along this line here it's not possible to do more of trades. So the first theorem of welfare economics here tells you that uh, free economy will actually lead you to a point along this indifference curve, or sorry, along this contract curve. The second theorem here tells you that all possible distributions are possible. You can be anywhere along this curve. The free market could lead you to any of these points depending on the initial distribution. What do I mean by the initial distribution? I mean, to start with here, in this economy, we give some apples and oranges to B, and we give some apples and oranges to, to A. And depending on how many apples and oranges we give to A and B, we will end up in one of these points here, along this curve. So the initial distribution, the initial how many apples and oranges we give to A and B to begin with, will, de will determine where we will end up here. And that's the second theorem of welfare economics. Now you understand it. Assume that these four conditions are satisfied, then the free market will produce something that is Pareto efficient. And all of these poss possibilities, all possible distributions, are possible to, pr to be pr can be produced in the market given the, in the changes in the initial distribution. That's all we're saying. And we're not still we're not saying that this you know this is plausible or all the assumptions actually are satisfied, we're just saying it's a mathematical proof. If we can assume that, then this follows. Thanks.